socialist. Well, this claim comes around just about every election cycle, and usually it shows up on your social media feed in some way or another, uh, either by meme or just someone posts it. They will say something along, along the lines that Jesus was a socialist, uh, among other things. And usually this is because they are trying to kind of overtly say that since Jesus was a socialist and you're a Christian, you should be a socialist too. Therefore, vote for whatever candidate holds to a socialist ideal. Now, not to paint too broad of a brush, but most often people that make this statement are those that don't know much about Jesus, or they don't know much about socialism, or they don't know much about either. But because it is an election cycle and it's coming around again, why don't we take a minute and ask this question for, uh, seriously and just find out, was Jesus a socialist? Now, socialism does find its roots in the French Revolution, mid-18th century. But most people would recognize that Karl Marx and Frederick Engels are the fathers of the modern socialist movement. They wrote the Communist Manifesto, among other things, and they are really the, the founding fathers of socialism. Marx. Now, Marx, socialism is characterized as the transitional state in which uh, common or state ownership of the means of production under democratic workers' control and management is exercised. Now, Webster's Dictionary has kind of a similar definition, which they believe that a, socialism is a way of organizing a society in which major industries are con owned and controlled by the government rather than the people or companies. So to begin with, a hallmark of socialism is communal property owned by the state or by the government. And while the fundamental notion of socialists is that all should be equal without class struggle, the reality is that those who run the government tend to be the ones of higher affluence, and they determine at what level the proletariat is equal. So there is still a class system in place, even if it's not directly stated as such. But all that aside, given just this information, we can now ask the question, is there anything that Jesus taught, or maybe that the disciples themselves practiced, that would indicate that Jesus or the church should lean towards socialism? Now, certainly there are moments in Jesus' teaching in which uh, it is recorded that he tells people to give up worldly possessions, uh, to get rid of material goods, material wealth. The synoptic, synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all recount at least one story of what's known as the rich young ruler, in which Jesus tells this rich young ruler if, that if he wants to be in the kingdom of God, he needs to sell all that he has and give to the poor. Now, before we can jump on this bandwagon and say that Jesus was teaching socialism at this point, we have to get a little bit of context. And remember, first and foremost, that this discussion that's recorded in the Gospels is between Jesus and the ruler. This is not like the Sermon on the Mount in which Jesus is preaching to a crowd of people or giving uh, lessons to his disciples and followers. It's Jesus talking to a particular person. Uh, not to anybody else around him, even if there are other people listening. He doesn't say to them, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. He says to the rich young ruler, nameless that he is, you go sell all that you have and give to the poor. And what this generally indicates is that this particular ruler was allowing his wealth to hinder his spiritual transformation and his relationship with God. So it is not necessarily a cry to communal property. Now, there is another often quoted section of scripture in which people show the modern church, or the early church, excuse me, uh, practicing socialism. That's in Acts chapter 4, 32 through 35, the closing verses of Acts chapter 4. It tells us that the, uh, the, new, the, the new church, Jesus has gone on to the Father. The first church is growing exponentially, and they are living in a type of community together in which all those that have money or have land and property are selling that wealth and giving the money to the apostles who then are distributing it to the, those in need. And uh, they are not lacking of anything. Now, certainly there is some similarities here to what socialism in theory tries to promote, and that is the sharing equally among each other to eliminate the, the poorest among you. But something to also recognize, again, is that the purpose for Jesus telling the rich young ruler this and the purpose behind the early church doing these things is so that they might grow closer to God, that they might 
see be more be more like Jesus and that others might see God through those actions and be brought into the kingdom of heaven. This is something that people did voluntarily as they were led by the Holy Spirit. Now socialism is government controlled giving by mandate or compulsion. There is no freedom in that. It is forced upon you. The early church gave as they were led. They were not required to, nor was it expected of them. Uh, the scripture just says that they chose to do so. And they did so for the purpose of being more like Christ or growing closer to the Lord. Now, Karl Marx, remember the father of modern socialism, when he spoke of religion in general, he said that religion is indeed the self-conscious and self-esteem of a man who has not yet won through to himself or has already lost himself again. That's hardly a man who would see the giving away of material goods as a means of following after God to be an equivocation to his own political position. So was Jesus a socialist? I would say no. But that doesn't mean he was a capitalist either. We need to be very cautious about trying to create Jesus after our own preferred political system. Far too often in any election cycle, various organizations try to co-opt the religious voter by showing Jesus as one of them, and therefore we should vote for them. But Jesus was not someone that can be politicized, and he cannot be made to fit into any man-made political system. He was countercultural in his own day as much as he is today, and I would expect nothing less of God incarnate. We should all be very, very cautious of any group seeking to fashion a Jesus after their own political image. Now, I will say this, that socialism, in my mind, does point toward heaven in one way. And let me explain that. You see, the cry of socialism is a cry of equality. Every one of us wants to feel loved, regardless of our social status we want to be as good as our neighbor, regardless of our bank account, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of our gender. For any reason, we just want to be treated the same. We all want to be valued equally. Socialism seeks to force this heart cry through the might and power of the state. But the state cannot quench the cry of the soul. Only God can. Paul wrote to the Galatian church, that in Christ there is no slave, nor free, no Jew, nor Greek, no male, nor female. To put it bluntly, Paul was saying that there is a classless society, and it's the kingdom of God. Now, how can this be? Well, the reason is that those who believe in God through the power of Jesus Christ are given his righteousness so they are no longer seen as their individual self, but as the righteousness of Christ. So when you feel that heart cry that socialism is boasting to be able to promise you, that heart cry for equality, I want you to consider that a classless society already exists in which you are valued equally with everyone else in it, and it is found at the foot of the cross and nowhere else.